Hey, happy campers. campers. Welcome back to Camp Shady Birch. You're in the house. You're in the cabin. You're on your bunk bed. You have a little bowl of popcorn. You have your curlers in <laughs> a nightgown, maybe. You're going to be finding those kernels of popcorn under your mattress and, and in your pillow. I typically, hey, hey, it's honest hour. This is my, this is my honest hour. I have a problem with my gums. I don't know if any other campers can relate. I have never had popcorn once in my life and not had to dig a kernel out days later. Days late. I once had a bad toothache in the in my, my back right molar. And I said, Doc, Doc, what could it be, Doc? And he said, that's a kernel, Zach. You can't have popcorn on your braces. And I said, first of all, I'm paying you. My mom is. And second of all, don't gaslight me in front of the nice aides. Um, so if you know, if you have braces, you can't have popcorn, but like d- grow up. Anyways, it's a lot of conversations about my oral history. Yeah, not you showing up with like yesterday's snack in your mouth. That's- my my first job was a movie theater. Okay, I'll give it to you there. I was 16 years old working at a movie theater attached to attached to a mall, and I and I had to just eat the popcorn. I will say the other night, it was a couple nights ago, we were watching uh, Housewives in Bed and we were eating popcorn, enjoying the drama as we do. Three days later, I felt something rolling around my toes. Your toes? Oh no, a piece of popcorn at the bottom of the bed? Popcorn had found its way to the bottom of the bed. It had a slumber party with us for a long weekend. Oh no, campers, can you relate (laughs) in your little cabin bunk? Everybody's like, none of us can relate. You guys are foul. That's (laughs) disgusting. Hey, honestly, if I'm sitting on the couch, if I'm in bed, I'm eating. People who don't eat in bed, kudos to you for being so cool and so strong. I eat wherever I lay. Mm. If I'm laying, I'm eating. I'm always eating, if anything. Retweet. Anyways, how's everyone's week going? Everyone having a good time out there in the Camp Shady Birch universe? It's very similar to the Marvel universe, just a little different, actually. Um, I hope everyone's having a good week. We're having, I'm having, a, I'm having a good week. I won't speak for you. I'm having a good week as well. A little overwhelming, but I think I'm, I'm having a good week. Nice. What, what's on the docket for next week, Jonathan? We are taking a trip. The trip of all trips. The trip to the magic little mouse down in Florida. Again. Again, yeah. So Disney World asked me to come back to do another trip with them. I'll know more um, tomorrow or this week. I have a call on Thursday with the entire team. I get to meet everybody that's going. It should be fun, though. Yeah, I think it's going to be a blast. Um, But right after I leave for that trip, I'm going right to a bachelorette party in New Orleans. Nola. We're going to have a lot to talk about next week on the trips. You're going to be tired. You have really good morale, though. You... You can rally. Yeah, we'll never complain on vacation. It's like my biggest complaint of people. It's like you're on vacation. No one wants to have no one wants to see you have a bad attitude. Okay. True. You better you better put a smile on and keep it rolling. True. Um, so this week I've been like online shopping so much for these trips just because I don't know. All I, I've been hiding under sweatshirts this entire winter, which has been great for me. But now I'm looking at my ratty t-shirts I've been wearing for the, the same ones for the past five years. And I've been online shopping. Um, a lot a lot of stuff from ASOS, a couple things from Urban. I'm feeling cute. Fun, fresh, and free. But you know what I'm missing? Wow. I'm missing the classic. Whatever happened? Let me bring it back. Whatever happened to the classic brick and mortar store at the mall? Whatever happened to shopping for clothing at the mall? We're all in the digital age. We're all living in this little cloud up in the sky. And I just want to step back into time and really peruse a good selection at a brick and mortar store. I feel like everybody like just loves shopping from the comfort of their own home. But the issue I run into is I just add so much stuff to my cart. I never buy anything. So it's like forever in my cart, never in my closet. But if I go to a mall, I am just wrapped up in the sales and the lights and the smell of Cinnabon coming from down around the corner. And I'm definitely going to buy things that I'm never going to wear. Yeah, yeah. I just I've always been a, a big fan of malls. I grew up in malls. My parents owned stores in malls. My first job was in the mall. Wait, let's, can we talk about that? Yeah, my parents owned a craft store slash floor store when I was a baby and I was a child. So yeah, when I used to um I used to go to work with them all the single all the time, and we'd like go to the Taunton Gallery Mall. They were on the second floor. Their store was right next to the Disney store. How full circle how is magical. that joke? So wait, how old are you at this point? Maybe like eight or nine. Okay. When I was like younger than that, they had the store that was like an actual store. And then they had two stores. One was the, the original store in Westport. And then it was the store in Taunton. 
Massachusetts. I feel like malls are just dying. Yeah, well, people, it's because everyone's addicted to those damn smartphones. I, but I will say I was blessed growing up with the King of Prussia Mall in Pennsylvania. If you've ever been there, it is absolutely massive. And it kind of annihilated all the malls that were in the surrounding area to begin with. As they should. But I love a mall. Did you ever see the movie American Mall? No. Uh, Nina Dobrev was in it. It is absolutely horrendous. It's one of those movies that I thought was so good I had to get the DVD of. It was like an MTV original trying to be High School Musical in a mall about people who like worked at the mall. And I was absolutely obsessed with like that idea of me and all my friends working at different stores and just meeting up somehow every single day making our breaks be at the same time in the food court. I did work with my best friend Gabby at H&M, which was fun. But I just loved that like the idea of a mall. Yeah, when I worked at Old Navy, um, it was my second job at the mall. First one was the movie theater. Then I worked at an Old Navy with a bunch of middle-aged women. I loved, loved, loved that job. My best friend Carly, she worked across the hall from me at Hollister. And we would both do like recovery, which means like you're just folding clothing. And I'd be doing like infants over in the front half of my like Old Navy. And right across the hall was the entrance to Hollister. So she would do that. And we'd like do a little peace sign. We'd be like, hey girly, what's up? But we never actually like, worked together. But it was fun just to be like in the presence of your best friend across the way. I feel like I, I couldn't do it now because like I in retail, the fact that they call it recovery as if you literally just got hit by a tornado coming through the store, especially <laughs> at H&M. It was bad. Have you ever worked Black Friday? Yeah, of course. It was bad. I think it's fun. I, I I think I like love it because like it was like all hands on deck. It was like crazy. All the morale was like everyone was like hyped up because they were like, it's going to be insane. So like you were so mentally prepared for it to be insane. Like they'd always cater Chipotle for us and stuff. And I just like enjoyed the chaos of it all. Like walking past somebody and being like, can you believe we're here right now? Everyone's going so crazy. Like I just like love to talk. So I think these moments are just like the best conversation piece with anybody who's working. So you're like all like in this together. I loved it. I did. Our store just got hit so hard. It was like diner dash. Like I'm doing 10 things, recovering the denim wall. And then like someone over here is like ripping through all the stuff in the kids section. It was just like utter chaos. It was too much for me. It was too much for me. Yeah, but you have to at some point just be like, okay, it is what it is. Like you can't fold everything. Like it was just, that's what it was. You can't like do it all. So like stop stressing and just lean into the fun of it all. And be like, when it's all over, we'll clean up then. Like. I'm not going to refold a stack of denim when when Polly Pocket's coming over here looking for a size 3230 when we've been sold out since 1 a.m., babe. It's gone. Old Navy, um, do you know the deals on cozy socks? Do you know the deals on flip-flops? They used to have deals by the hour. It was like 2 a.m. to 3 a.m. It's this one. Like, it was nuts. Um, but I just, I thought it was fun. So where were you going for lunch? In the food court? Because let's talk about the food court. How exciting is a food court? Well, you worked at like the best mall in America and you had you had multiple food courts. I worked at the Dartmouth Mall. There was three restaurants. Um, there was a really shady Chinese restaurant. Um, I love the Italian one, Raynoni's. If you know, you know. They used to have this deal for four garlic knots with this like little dip sauce of like oil and like cheese. And it was a dollar. And I was making eight dollars at the time. So it was like my go to meal. You're like, that's 10 minutes of my time. I'm going to take it. Yeah, of course. And the, the movie theater was right next to the food court. So I used to peruse down there, wait to the girlies at Piercing Pagoda, shake my ass in front of Limited Two. And then I would just get my little treats and I go back. I loved it. I loved it. Love eating, especially at a mall. I'm obsessed. Did you have Sabaro? No, because we had the local Raynonis. Oh. Um. Yeah, the, our malls are different, babe. I'm basically like one step above a strip mall, and you were at the Mall of America's like ugly stepsister. What's a strip mall? A strip mall? I'm kidding. You know what a strip mall <laughs> is. Knock it off. <laughs> uh, I was thinking about store names that were really popular in like the 2000s American Eagle, Aeropostale, Aeropostale, one or the, one or the other, and then Abercrombie and Fitch. Why do they all start with A's? Um, stores would name at uh, the first beginning of the alphabet back in the day, historically, to get top billing in um, phone books. <laughs> top billing. I'm not joking. If you're think about your no no everybody calm down. Think about this one. Okay. When you think about your hometown pizza that there is, was there ever an A1 pizza? We had an A1 pizza because in the in the phone book it would be alphabetical. So, oh, we want pizza. We want pizza. You open up that fat yellow pages, A1, first one, call it. It's fine. Think of a, a, a huge trash company, ABC Disposal. 
There's so many things that have like a number, a something, because in a directory, it's always going to come up first. Do you think that's why Sabaros went out of business? Because they got people got you got to flip through the pages to get to ask. Sabaro went out of business because when you're in that setting, I'm not craving pizza. When I'm in a food court, pizza's reserved for the home. Pizza's where the home is. I want that delivered to my house when I want to have movie night. When I'm out and about with the girls. No, I want a little, lo I want lo mein. I want the Chinese food. That's like iconic food court to me or major category, taking a left turn here, pretzels. Pretzels, give them all. Do you want a pretzel when you're at home on a Friday night? Yes. No? Okay, well, um, usually you'd want pizza. I just feel like Sabaro just didn't know where to be. They just started like that girl that comes to the party late and you're like, no, 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 it's okay. And they're like, was I invited? And you're like, no, you were. The person you, that your friends with, they already left. Uh, do we have a class together? Like, you just don't know her that well. But, like, you know her, but not that well. The only Sabaros now I've seen are at rest stops, and they're always closed. I'm like, are you out of business? Or are you opening for, like, 10 minutes a day? What's going on here? Is it a front? Is it a drug front? Are you selling drugs? Where can I are, buy drugs here? Where are the? Can I buy drugs here? Where are the good Sabaros? Where are they located? The rest stops in Connecticut. Honestly, I will. Hey, raise of hands, everybody. Who's had a Sabaro that was good? I have. It actually is quite good. It's just so distant in my memory. I, I don't remember. Mm, so when you went to the Providence Place Mall where I was growing up, they had a really good food court. And I used to love going there as a teenager because I would go peruse the amazing selection of stores there. And then when you go to the food court, they'd have a lot of samples because there were so many like businesses that they had to kind of do the sample thing. So you could walk around and get samples from, I would say, six out of 12 of the places. And you'd have, you'd have some nourishment. You'd be fine. And there was a sushi place. Not sure if it's still there. And they would give out sushi samples. That's exciting. A roll. That is one piece of a roll. That's exciting and risky. Yeah, but it was always a very safe bet. Like he was giving imitation crab. It was oh, giving cucumber roll. Like what they weren't giving roll. like sashimi on yeah, the side. Yeah. Okay. That's that's smart. That's smart. So speaking of samples, I worked at Lush. I feel like not a lot of people know that about me. I worked at Lush and the amount of people who would come in just like begging for a sample, which we would give, but you could tell if it was like someone who was like, oh, I need to try this face cleanser to see if I break out. Or if there's like little kids who are like, can I get a bubble ball? And also, can you split up this bath bomb and put it in a sample for me? Oh, really? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. We would have to like limit to like six samples. People come in asking for like 12 samples. I'm like, I know you're not coming back to buy this. You're just stocking up your, your shower, which, hey, as a customer, I can respect, but it's really annoying to me right now in this moment. I just, something about Lush is so inherently irritating to me. I don't know why. Why are people so aggressive at Lush? I'll tell you why. They push so, and I know they, they do this at a lot of stores. Every store has sales had, quotas. I, and I understand that. But we had, every time like someone walked in, there was like a, a sensor that was above. And we would have to fulfill our numbers per person who walked in. So if there's a big group that walks in, we would try, like our managers would try to get us to split them up to try to like buy stuff. In my head, I was always like, I don't think this is going to like work the way you want it to work. But who am I to say? Like, they're going to pay me. So I'm just going to do what they're told. But I personally, I hate being attacked by the people specifically at Lush too when they like get you to sit down that was our big thing you get somebody to sit down and do a demo on them that's not like a bath bomb demo or like something in the bath section that was like the least of our worries it was like trying to get somebody to sit down talk about their skincare regimen and find something a three-step program plus a mask that works for them and that was so hard to do and when you did it you would have to have like really good rapport and sometimes i would have somebody sitting there and i was doing like doing the thing on their hands and i'm like i know you're not gonna buy this and she's like i'm so sorry i'm like i know let's just like get through this together my manager is looking <laughs> it was it was yeah. rough it was hard i know i just i feel like at the end of the day every store has sales quotas but somehow lush thought it was like life or death maybe it's because soap is a hard sell you maybe know? i don't think people go to the mall to buy soap and like Lush, they stay creative with it. They're like, hey, look at this one. Yeah. It's like, but I don't like when pe I, as a consumer, hate being asked if I need help. Like if I need help, I'll I promise ask. I will ask. Yeah. But like Lush, they make it a point to like, you, you say no and they don't, they don't back up. And I, and I'm sorry. And I get it. Like that's the structure of the business. But like, it's really off-putting. If Lush corporate's listening, you guys are off-putting. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, it is a lot. But I will say another th reason why they told us to do that was because they didn't spend money in advertising, like period. 
there you'll never see like a lush ad you'll never see it in like a magazine or anything you'll only hear about it on like youtube that's why they they got heavy into influencers when they did or you they used to give out like the magazines that they don't do that anymore but they would like pride themselves on being like it's spread by word of mouth so if we give people a good experience here which to them at the beginning was like let me take you under my wing and like do all this fun stuff like it's a spa like that was what the idea was there. Hey, the products are good. I'm not yeah. anti lush here. I'm just anti being attacked into a store. I'm on the same page as you. I hate and I hated doing it. Did you know there's a spa? No. There's two lush spas in the world, and one of them's in Philadelphia. And I got to go, and oh. it was incredible. It was really cool. Well, I feel like maybe um, when we go to um, Philly on Thursday, we can stop by. If I'm good, will you take me to King of Prussia? I just I did some online shopping. I just like to go into a store. The worst case scenario, I go into the mall, and all I get is a pretzel, and it's a great day for me. Yeah, we'll go. All right. If you're behaved. Okay, I'll try. Attention campers, please meet at the old flagpole under the tall pine for morning announcements. Attention campers, fun announcement. We will be taking a field trip to the nearest Lush. So make sure you get your permission slip signed and you steal $50 at minimum from your parents' wallet. The bus only seats 11. The 12th seat is not functional. So first come, first serve campers. All right, so what do you got for uh, for morning announcements? Morning announcement campers. I found this crazy story on Reddit, and it's really not breaking the waves here in America, but it has um, brought some major news attention around the world. So there was a man in Peru who was arrested after police found out that he was carrying around a mummy. Okay. Oh, wait, so long story short here, this man is at this like archaeological like site in Peru that's kind of like a tourist attraction. Like I don't know if it's like a, a ruin of some sort. And he's carrying around this like bag on the back of his bike, I believe. It's a cooler bag that like picture what you would see a delivery driver using. Okay. Like not the pizza ones, but more of like a cube. Yeah. And he was acting really weird, like erratic. And he wasn't being like a threat, but he was being like a nuisance. So the cops like pull him over like what are you doing here like why are you acting a damn fool and he's like i'm just chilling with my friends and they're like what's in the bag he was like don't look in the bag and they're like we're going to look in the bag sir so the peruvian police open the bag and they uncover a mummy that's like semi wrapped up but very well preserved and they're like um who is what what's going on with the mummy and he's like chill 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 this is juanita um juanita yeah he's named the mummy juanita and they're like juanita's been in his family for like he said 30 years years he's only 26 so his dad was responsible for bringing this mummy home and we're still not sure how the dad got the mummy but he's like yeah like she spends like every day with me we like sleep in the same room not the same bed i was looking for that i really wanted to make that connection but he just kept saying the same room and he's like she's kind of like my spiritual girlfriend and they were like hey we don't have a warrant but like you're absolutely not leaving with this mummy so they seized the mummy okay rightfully so and they gave the mummy to the the mummy doctors. I'm not sure who you give a mummy to. Like yeah, a scientist? Probably. They give it to somebody who's an expert in mummies and they look at this and they're like, wow, this is a really well-preserved mummy that's between 600 and 800 years old. Here's the kicker. It's a man. It's a man mummy. <laughs> so the news station's like, the, it wasn't really Juanita. Maybe more of a one if you if you want. <laughs> so they've taken the mummy away from him. He's kind of upset, but I think he understands. And he was like, I was just going to the park to show off my mummy to my friends. But um, now they have a new mummy. And I think it's crazy that he thought it was his girlfriend, but it's actually his boyfriend. Womp womp. That, I thought you were going to say that he found it there. I'm no. like, oh no, he's had it for 30 years. They share a bedroom. They're basically roommates. Or as he calls his spiritual girlfriend slash boyfriend. That's weird. Yeah. And if you look at the pictures online, which I'm sure you're going to put into the podcast if you're watching yeah. on YouTube, like it's a very well-preserved mummy in like a takeout container. I... <laughs> <laughs> like a big well, box. So disturbed. I really hope he doesn't like continue to use that for yeah. his job. Yeah. Doing DoorDash. He, at some point, the only way you get one of those things is through like some sort of like like working like, job. Yeah. Like, I don't know if you can buy them. Maybe he did. He's like, oh, it's got you. It's like, no, it's not got you. <laughs> it's not DoorDash. I feel like 600 years isn't that old for a mummy. I was trying to do the math in my head and I just simply could not. That's like the, the 90s. Well, 1990s. It was, it's pretty well preserved. It's kind of in the fetal position. It's like, hey... 
Like, you know what I mean? It's like, let me bring it to the park to show it off to my friends. Maybe that's just something that you leave at your house. I feel like he was probably trying to, like, scam tourists. Being like, oh, you want to see a real mummy? Give me 20 bucks. You know what I mean? He, there was no information on that, but it was kind of like a, a like a hot spot for oh, people to go visit. You know what I mean? Yeah. But he was drunk. So, like, had he had not been drunk, he would have gotten away with Juanita. But they said, no, no, no. Give me Juan. Oh, give me Juan back. That's weird. Yeah. I thought you guys should know. So, if you're thinking about bringing a <laughs> mummy to the camp... I say do it. I'm not going to call the police. Just make sure you put it in something more appropriate than a takeout bag. I would like some sort of big glass container a la Beauty and the Beast with the rose, <laughs> but a mummy. A bell jar. Is that what they're called? Yeah. Bell jars are so pretty. Like you can put the ugliest fucking cupcake in a bell jar mm. and I'm like $14. Yeah. <laughs> I'll uh, buy it. hundred percent. You're so right. Yeah. So it wasn't a bell jar. It was a takeout container. Anyways, mm, that's all I got for you. Someone you- call Brendan Fraser. <laughs> <laughs> someone call Brendan Fraser. We have a sequel cooking up in peru do you have a little story for us yes i do so this article is coming from the guardian and it's titled heinz to give new boat to man who survived on ketchup while at sea yummy sorry while lost at sea Ooh, sad but yummy so in january 2023 the colombian navy rescued a 47 year old dominican man named elvis francois Um, And he had been stranded on his sailboat for 24 days in the open ocean. So I guess back in December, he was trying to clean off his boat or do something with his boat. He wasn't trying to leave the dock. But while cleaning, a storm had come and the current swept it away. And while it was pulling the boat away, he was trying to like, he was by himself. He was trying to get on the phone and call his friends and family. And the um, the cell service cut real quick. He was like, oh shit. Like he could still see land. He couldn't get off the boat, but he had no cell service. So he was like, I hadn't, I couldn't do anything because I was trying to fix my broken boat, except just sit there and hope that I didn't get too far away. Like, how scary is that? So this was happening in uh, St. Martin. Couldn't point that out on a map if oh, I tried. Oh, St. Martin. Yeah, it's in St. It's in St. Thomas. So because he wasn't prepared to um, even make a small voyage, he had zero food. He had nothing with him. He was planning on getting off the boat after he had done his repairs. But what he found on the boat were um, was a bottle of Heinz ketchup and garlic powder and seasoning cubes. So he was like collecting rainwater and making a soup from the seasoning cubes and ketchup and just eating ketchup by the spoonfuls. Wait, so genius. Isn't though. it? Yeah. It's like it definitely doesn't sound like appetizing, but I think to like for nourishment, I've watched a lot of a lot of episodes of Naked and Afraid. You know that about me. I'm very obsessed with that show. And I think you'd be surprised what the human body can sustain if you just give it something. Even if it's a goddamn acorn. The body's like, thank you. So that's a lot more than most people get on that show. I feel like we should and I'm talking about myself, but I would love it if you joined me in like investing some time into like a survivor, a survivalist like Why YouTube you so video series obsessed with this? because I feel like it, if I get stuck in quicksand I know what to do if I get caught on fire stop drop and roll I can do that but if I'm on a boat that's sailing away like I have no survival skills I don't think I'm gonna make it past noon I only want to watch stuff like that if there's a level of entertainment if it's just informational boring yawning I don't want to watch it find me a reality competition show where they're lost on a boat and they have to do it themselves and I can learn proxy them I like that better Okay, you say that now until it actually happens, and then we're like, well, what do we do? I would never be in a dinghy. I wouldn't be caught dead in a dinghy in the middle of a storm. You, storms don't just turn on overnight, okay? He was pushing the limit, and he can't tell you otherwise. Continue. So eventually, uh, after 24 days that he was stuck drinking rainwater and eating ketchup, he was rescued because he used a mirror to signal a plane that was going by. So Heinz caught wind of this, and they were trying to find out this guy because initially his um, his identity was like under wraps. So they started the hashtag social media campaign hashtag finds the ketchup boat guy, which I feel is a little um, self serving and a little degrading. But uh, who am I to say? Because it did reach five million people. They were able to contact Elvis through Emo News, which is his local news station, which I think is like all right, love that. <laughs> uh, and they said, hey. We want to buy you a new boat. And where the story lands as of now, um, he is contemplating, but I don't think getting on a boat anytime soon is like what he's trying to do right now. I know. They're like, they should have like given him money towards a scholarship for a new 
career path. I know. They're like, get back on, baby. And here's some more. And you know they're so self-serving, right? Yeah. They're gonna make, and here's a lifetime supply of the thing that traumatized you most. Catch a <laughs> bitch. It's got Heinz branding all over that boat. I was just going to say, it's going to be a red boat with that lettering, all, with the keystone everywhere. He said, please, all I want to do is forget this trauma. And they're like, no, no, no. It's in the shape of one of our <laughs> silly little squeeze bottles, bitch. <laughs> Honestly, that's awful and sad. Wait, there's no more information about how the plane found him. I feel like that was the best part and we got nothing. Uh, well, it said uh, there was parts where he was trying to write help and like SOS and do like a fire, but he couldn't because the fire kept going out because his boat was like flooding. Oh my God. And he every day, like every hour he had to wake up and like scoop the water out of the sailboat so it wouldn't go under. So he couldn't even get like a full night's rest of over 24 days while eating ketchup i cannot wait to watch this on hbo in two years it's definitely going to be a movie but i also i do think that whatever business he was doing um his boat was his livelihood because he was the most upset that when he got rescued they had to like the boat had to go and he was like well there goes my everything well here we go heinz is getting a new boat it's traumatizing but he has that and i think he needs to get a manager and he needs to sell his story because we are not getting half of what actually happened there. So I think um, maybe if he can sell the rights to this story, um, I say go for that. Make money off your trauma, people. Get creative, okay? Are we qualified to be giving advice? No. Are we going to do it anyway? Absolutely. Welcome back to Dear Counselors. We haven't done one of these in a little bit. It's have been we? a minute. It's yeah. been a, I, I want to do them more. Mm -hmm. I could do one every single episode. I love giving advice that is not... Um, I don't know, quarantined, gone through some sort of... Um, vetted, vet, vet, vetteration system? Nothing, nothing is vetted. It's right off the top of our noggin, guys. And this is a juicy one. Okay. Should I get into it? Take me there. Dear counselors. That's me. <laughs> I have an amazing boyfriend of four years who I love dearly and plan to spend the rest of my life with. He gets along great with my family, has a good relationship with all of my siblings, and my parents love him. It all seems perfect. Too perfect. Something seems like it's going to go awry. Uh. <laughs> the problem, however, is on my boyfriend's side of the family. His parents are absolutely wonderful people who I have an amazing relationship with, but he has one brother, we'll call him Alex, and one family friend who claims to be his sister. We'll call her Megan. I need the campers to know that she has chosen to write sister in parentheses. So the woman that's being referred to as a sister is not by blood, a family friend who's just giving sister energy. Mm -hmm. I can already see where this is going. Alex's girlfriend, who he's been dating for about a year and a half, absolutely hates me. First of all, you've been there longer. You've been there for four years. She's been there for a year and a half. Bitch, sit the hell down. She and I have a lot in... <laughs> She and I have a lot of common interests, so I expected us to get along great. But according to her, I'm a know-it-all, I am Miss Perfect, I get everything I want, etc. All of which she has decided before she ever met me. Now, I could deal with this shitty relationship. It's not ideal, but it's whatever. The main issue comes with the not-sister Megan, who likes to go see movies alone with my boyfriend, despite being ne nearly 15 years older than him, oh. and attempts to degrade me at every opportunity she gets. She loves to make it seem like I'm on the outside of inside jokes she has with my boyfriend and his family, talks down to me because of the age difference, and worst of all, has made it her mission to befriend Alex's girlfriend. Oh, the, not the alliance. The girls are teaming up against her. I know it's immature to say, but seeing them comment on each other's Instagram posts makes my blood boil. I'm so tired of the bullshit and being blamed for drama that I didn't cause. My question, oh wise counselor, is how do I handle the situation? Do I confront any of them? Do I ask my boyfriend to? Do I continue to ignore it so I keep the peace? I know that's the most reasonable choice, but I'm really tired of acting like I don't mind being the problem when I know I'm not. Please send your advice, join me in shit-talking these women, or pass along Sandwich's number once he is no longer disbarred so I can sue them from defamation. <laughs> Sincerely, Messy and Law Drama in the Mess Hall. First off, Camper, Sandwich is still in the middle of a very, very incredibly heavy legal battle with parties unknown. Parties that we cannot say. So Sandwich isn't here to defend you, but you know who is? 
me and Counselor Jonathan. Okay. Jonathan, what what do you think? Give me some of your thoughts. Give us your opinions. What would you do? <clears throat> so I have a couple of thoughts. Well, mm-hmm. first off, I don't know if the boyfriend is aware of this stuff going on. True. If he does not camper, tell him everything that's going on and tell him how you feel because I feel like he you just you have to he has to be in the know with where you stand with this so he can at least take your back on situations when when you're in the same room with these people so she's been with him for four years this other girl is one year and then the sister that's weird it's screaming jealousy it's screaming like you are the whole package and you're a sweetheart and they want to be like you so what i would say is as exhausting as it is maybe just like kill him with kindness and then if they continue on i would say bring it up and be like hey this is what's going on here girls what's going on here yeah i i see that's the thing is i she's been killing them with kindness and she's getting attacked back i disagree a little bit i think you've waited long enough i agree Lupin the boyfriend here see what he says if it's gonna put him in a weird spot girl you've been there the parents love you the only problem you have is with the new bitch that's been there for a year and a half and this weird sister vibe girl she can back up i am like such a, a believer in um um confrontation like i love it i i think it's like the best way to handle stuff like this i think if you're being outwardly disrespected in a public setting you're not the only one who's noticing it and i think by bringing it up i seeing something like what do you mean by that or i don't feel that way but it's interesting that you do do you mind not saying that to me again because it makes me really uncomfortable and it makes me feel bad about myself in that situation, you've abdicated all responsibility off of yourself and made that person look like a complete asshole to their face but by, by not being mean, you know what I mean? So now they have to sit with themselves and be like, oh shit, I can't act like this or I'm going to look like, the, like a messy bitch. So I think just be really smart with your word choice and really play the upper hand here. You know that you're not doing anything wrong, so don't get on their level Bring it to their attention publicly, especially in front of his parents, so that they see it. And they can be like, yeah, why is she being so salty? Mm. You definitely have an upper hand over the girlfriend. The sister, I feel like I'm not getting enough detail about her relationship, but she is a family friend. I hate when people do inside jokes around other people purposefully when they know someone doesn't know. I have been in rooms where people have done that to me where I haven't known. And I've also had friends do it to me when I'm in the know in front of people that don't know. And I'm never like gas that up. I'm always like, that's just weird yeah. jealousy behavior. It's like, you need to have something to talk about that I can't relate to. It's like establishing like, oh, we have something that you guys don't have. It's like, girl, we we know, okay? And, and I'm okay with that, but it seems like you're not okay that I have something that you don't have. You know what I mean? Yeah. Ugh, it looks like you got a lot of fans, girl. And it looks like you're the popular girl. True. And it's hard being the popular girl. It is. It's but not. I think you need to own yourself in this situation and say, I'm not putting up with this. I'm going to throw some water at some bitches, put out some fires, and make myself look like the best version of me. I'm on your side, camper. Grab your bug juice and bear spray, campers. It's time to pack it up and take a hike. Welcome back to Take a Hike, the part of the show where we bitch about stuff. We rant a bit, talk about what's grinding our gears. So what's been grinding my gears? What's Question. been giving you lockjaw? <laughs> I actually do have temporary lockjaw. What have sometimes. you been leaving sleep, losing sleep over? You haven't been sleeping well. I've been noticing. You've been tossing. You've been turning. Something's scratching at your back, and you need to get it off your chest. All right, fine, fine. I'll tell you. What is it? So, <laughs> sorry. I hate when someone has something to say about about something that somebody loves. Let me give you an example. Mm-hmm. I was on. T- <laughs> Are you giving me that look? No, I went. Mm-hmm. I know, but you're giving me a look. Well, you know, I have a lot of opinions. Okay, so <laughs> I was on TikTok, and there's this girl who has a Stanley Cup, which I thought was only related to hockey but it's like uh, an insulated cup it's like a yeti basically and you had told me about them i didn't know they existed i think the campers know well i didn't know about two months ago but now i know anyway stanley cup insulated cup and she has this it's pink it's cute and she's like let me show you all the accessories i got for it i got a backpack for my stanley cup and i was like that is absolute insanity she's like it's good for when you're at the gym i can put like my phone in there and another thing i was like okay that makes sense and then she goes on to show that she has like a 3m hook that she bought off of etsy and she's like it sticks right on there and then for that 3m hook i also have a little carabiner that you can hook on to carry this little tiny pocket that you can put your chapstick into and in my head i'm like okay i can just slide my chapstick in my pocket or not worry about it when I'm at the gym. But it looked cute. And then she put all these charms on it. It looked cute for a second. And then it started to look really obnoxious. Not my thing. But I was like, okay, it's making her happy. She's loving it. I go to the comments. 
everybody's just like destroying this girl and they were like why this is absolutely unnecessary stop wasting your money why are you trying to make people spend their money blah 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 blah, blah. it looks like shit this is not practical that's not going to fit in your cup holder though i do agree i'm not going to say anything about it this mm. is making this girl happy yeah she, if she wants to walk around with her her stanley cup with with a microwave on it that's fine because it's making her happy not the microwave (laughs) (laughs) it really was like it was becoming a lot but i didn't say anything and i feel like somebody always has something to say and it's always really mean like one time we were at the the feast which is in where is it it's the famous portuguese feast in new bedford every single year the madeira feast thank you so we were there and it's all portuguese it's all portuguese food there's not much food that i can have as a pescatarian but i was very drunk and i needed food so i got a little fish cake the codfish cakes yeah bachel yeah bachel i'm like hi can i get a bachel thank you very much and i get it and i put a little bit of hot sauce on it and some ketchup and a girl came up to me and she's like i don't know you and i don't ever want to know you you never put ketchup and hot sauce on bachel and i was so embarrassed and a lot of people were staring at that point because she was very loud and drunk and i was like I'm just really hungry and I didn't want to scream that they were dry, but they were a little on the drier side. I need a moist fish cake. I need a moist fish yeah, cake. Yeah, bitch, back the fuck up. Who the fuck are you? Get off my fucking jock right now, bitch. I'll fucking throw your face in the ketchup, bitch. Okay. I would never. Ew. People don't talk to me like that. Did, oh, did, absolutely not. Did you see her come up to me? Babe, I was blackout. Okay. Well, it has affected me and I think about it a lot and I'm like, I'm never going to even, yeah. I'm going to eat before I go to the next one because of the way that she yucked my yum yeah and that's that's what it's called bring that run that back for the campers that's what it's really called don't yuck my yum listen sometimes i'm gonna yuck your yum but we're in a we're in a we're in a committed relationship we're together you've yucked my yum i've yucked your yum you've chugged my chain i've tugged yours okay i will say that's a little different when you know somebody when people are outwardly disrespectful to people they do not know especially these people online who have an anime picture as their profile picture and i know it's a 13 year old i am not above verbally assaulting a 13 year old okay i won't hit them because of laws but if i'm ever disrespected by a teenager in public or anybody for that matter bitch don't i'm not the one and you shouldn't be the one either this is why the world needs a lesson in confrontation we're bringing you back to your counselors because i feel like if people are a little too brave nowadays to be talking as if they know how to fight i don't know how to fight but you best believe if i have words come out of my mouth i'm ready to back it up with some hands okay i don't care who that woman was that to you it's not okay and i feel bad for the stanley cup girl personal opinion yeah She's probably spending a little bit too much money, but I've never gone on a, a an online like forum and been like making fun of people for doing that. I do that behind your back like an adult, okay? <laughs> How, but I will say, you yucked my yum once. I've and, yucked, I've yucked her multiple and, times, and then you you shifted positions once you tried it. Don't knock it till you try it. Let that be another lesson, campers. Something I do, what well, I did for a very long time as a child, not so much as an adult. That you were like, that is so fucking weird. If you say what I think you're going to say, I'm going to go back on it and say it's disgusting. There was one case where it was okay. What was it? I put Nesquik powder. I put Nesquik powder on my ice cream. No, you tried it and you you put it in your pudding. And I swear to God. That's not in the ice cream. It's different. It, It... no, keep going. You didn't try it in the ice cream. You tried it in the pudding. I and tried you... it in your ice cream. It was gritty. It tastes like a sandbox. That's not how it works. You know what? Maybe it is a sandy texture because sometimes I do like when I'm eating oysters or Explain clams. Explain what it is because I cut you off. I'm sorry. And then I, I get a little sand in it and I'm like, I feel like I feel like I'm returning to my, my mermaid oats. You know? Jonathan puts Nesquik powder on vanilla bean ice cream because you know the bitch only eats vanilla bean. He's really adventurous over here. And he mixes it in and just get chocolate ice cream at that point. He's like, it's so good. You it's have it. different. So I didn't yuck it initially because I was like, oh, in theory, I thought it could be good. And then I tried it and I'm like, this isn't even melting or blending. And then the point in which you're referencing is I mixed it into my sugar-free vanilla pudding. I was on a diet, okay? I was talking myself into anything. When you're on a diet, you'll make yourself believe anything tastes good, okay? That's how cauliflower got its 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 credibility, okay? Have you ever had a cla- <laughs> cauliflower by itself? It tastes like bullshit. Ever had a beet? To ever, hurt. Ever had a beet? Beets are disgusting. And that's in the same category as your your chocolate powder on your vanilla. Yeah, I did yuck that. And I can say that to you because we're together, okay? God, I'm all flustered. 
Well, guys, if you have Nesquik in your cabinet, which nobody's had since 2005, go ahead and throw that on some sugar-free pudding. It's pretty good. Only yuck people's yum if you know them. Okay, valid. It Also, it is different for people to do it on the internet because that happens a lot. And for that girl to come up to me, I know alcohol was involved in her system, but damn, mm. she just really took... Okay, I'm not... Also, I'm not Portuguese. And they had it out. If you don't want me to put it on there, don't put it in the little window. Obrigado. Obrigado. Anyway, what's been grinding your gears? Um, uh, What's been... <laughs> I feel like you're fired up right now. So go let it out, babe. It's really not that serious, but you know when you're out to eat and there's one piece of an appetizer left and there's someone at the table and they feel the need to shout, eat that, that's yours, that's your piece, eat that, there's one piece left. I have this theory in my head that the person who is shouting at the top of their lungs that there's one piece of an appetizer left and so-and-so needs to eat it, baby, calm down, you want it. Like, just Breathe a minute, okay? Uh, there's a rule here. If you think you've eaten too much of a, a shared plate, stop. Look at yourself and say, I've had the lion's share. If it's been five minutes and no one's touched it, it's okay for you to have that last piece. This is communal. Not everything has to be broken up into identical pieces, but don't use your want to shout at me saying, I need to eat that. Because if I wanted it, baby, best believe I would have had it. I don't want it. I just think it's really aggressive, and I notice that with a lot of people, a lot of people do that. I don't do that to people. I'll just eat it by myself. I'm never mad. There's more food coming. It's an appetizer. I know you have something to say. You're calling me out because that happened two nights ago. You do this so much, and I tell you, I'm like, baby, you can just have the last shrimp. It's okay. I'm not mad at you, but I don't like when you sit there and you yell at me and you say, eat it. It's yours. Eat it, eat it, eat it. I don't do that. You do. When have I ever done that? Name one time. Name the restaurant. Name the day of the week. We Two days ago, we were out to eat with your brother and there was one piece of bread left and you said, Zach, eat it. Have the last piece of bread. Just have it. Have it. And I'm like, babe, I don't want it. And then you, you said, you said, I don't want it. I definitely don't want it. And then guess who's vodka penne came to the table and I look over his plate. Guess who is sopping up that silly little pasta with his bread? It was you. Babe, just take the bread. No one's going to hurt you, you know? But don't use that as an opportunity to yell at people to eat. I never yelled at you. You raised your voice. I never raised my voice. It wasn't aggressive. Voice. You had a couple of drinks. Okay. Look All who's, right. look who's right. turning into the Bacalhau person. Paint the narrative how you may. I'll, I know the truth. I am the truth seeker. Okay, let's separate ourselves out of this story, okay? Let's pretend that this has nothing to do with us and it's more of a global... Um, I don't know. Phenomenon. Uh, yeah, more of a global phenomenon on the average day American. Do you see what I'm saying though? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I don't want you to feel attacked because I love you and it's a very funny quirk about you, but it's not just you. I think a lot of people do it. Um, I just think if if you are that person, it no one's going to be mad at you if you have the last bite. You have it. You want it. Because guess what? When the dessert came and there was one bite left... I proudly took a bite because I knew at that table, I appreciated that sticky toffee pudding more than anybody else did because Mm, I'm a custard girl. That sticky toffee pudding was so good. So good. No, but I do. I do agree. So how much time are we leaving between when the last person touched it to when you're just going to go for it? I think a respectable four to five minutes. Four to five minutes. Read the room. You know if someone else wants it. And there's definitely been a couple short t- times when there's been an appetizer that I want the last bite. And I take it because, bitch, f- everyone made it for themselves here. You know what I mean? Well, also, it was a bread basket. Let's say that. It wasn't like an appetizer. So there's always more bread. We could always just be like, hey, let's get yeah. another basket. And it's just an appetizer, okay? Like, this is a shared experience. Yeah. You are worthy of that last bite like everybody else is. Don't feel the need to be loud about it. Because now you're just drawing attention on yourself. Just take it. And then if someone's mad about it, we'll order another one. You know? I feel like I'm in therapy. You sound a lot like what my therapist used to t- to sound like. He's still alive. I just don't go to him anymore. Maybe I should. Oh, no. You don't have to go to therapy. Mm-hmm. I just made me laugh. That's why I brought it up. But it's <laughs> it's not just you. It's It's been an ongoing thing my entire life that I've noticed about people. I'm always like, the loudest person wants it. Why don't they just take it? It's true. Take that, Brad. And take a hike. Either way, I'm giving them my boondoggle keychain. Over. Welcome back to Camper Crush of the Week, where we talk about the things we've been crushing on, things we've been loving, things we've been obsessing over or mildly obsessing over for the past day. I like to consider it as like, who am I daydreaming about? 
like this week? What am I thinking about longingly, lovingly? Who are you crushing on this week? That's poetic. So my crush of the week is flash mobs. Now, I've never been in a flash mob. I've never seen one in real life. But I was watching a video of this person who just started one. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is so exciting for the people around. It's loud music. There's one guy dancing. You're like, okay, fine. And then next thing you know, the person sitting next to you eating an ice cream cone is in on the joke. And you're like, oh, my God. And then the person to the right of you is in on it. You're standing in the middle of this. People are dancing to Bruno Mars marry you. Someone proposes at the end teary-eyed i could not i i just i think flash mobs are such a fun such a fun concept that i would love to be a part of so i did my research and i was like okay well how do i how do i found find out when one of these was happening yep um just so i can like be there or something so i i was trying to look for it, it doesn't really work out that way they do things for events and i'm looking it up i'm getting a lot of search results but it's for planning one like to buy a flash mob for an event i'm like well i don't want to do that how do i get into flash mob the, the mob of the flash mob. I guess that's why they call it a flash mob because it's like the mafia. It's all underground. Um, so <laughs> if anybody knows how to get into one, I, I can make an audition tape. Um, I can. Sh- I just want to shuffle ball change my way into that industry. I think it would be really fun if it, you get paid to just be out and be like, la, la, la. And then all of a sudden you're dancing and like someone proposes at the end. I think it would be fun. Yeah, it's it's very 2012 of you. I don't are people still doing those? Have you ever seen one? Not live, but I've seen them a plenty on YouTube. It is definitely very 2012, but um I think we need to make a resurgence because who doesn't love it? Everybody everybody has their phones out. Everybody stops what they're doing. It's almost like like no matter if you're in a hurry or what's happening, if you're in the vicinity, you're stopping and you're staring like the great American artist who sang Stop and Stare? Oh, I don't know. Okay, well, someone sang it, but that's what everybody's doing is just stopping and staring. And I think I think it's fun and everybody just dances. It's all good vibes, you know? Yeah, it's definitely fun. I don't know if I would, I, I, don't, I don't watch them on like line anymore, but I think if I was ever like in the presence of one, it would take my breath away and I probably would start crying. Yeah. Because it is a very emotional moment. Um, We need to bring them back. I think they're kind of an old school thing. I think they've had enough of a break that maybe it's your quest in life to bring them back. I also think like watching it in a video is more corny than it would be in real life. So I feel like in real life, I would just be like, <laughs> this is the greatest thing ever. I did like an indie film uh, back when I was like 19 and I had to cry in a scene and I was like, well, how am I going to do that without like one of those vapor rub things? So I literally, before we would do a take, I would go to the bathroom and I watched this very specific video of someone who gets this girl in like the back of a minivan with the hatch up and all of her friends from out of town come in and they start dancing. I'm getting goosebumps already. And all of her friends are coming up and she sees her parents who flew in from Alaska and she's like crying. And then at the end, the guy comes up. I want to say it was Bruno Mars marry you, but I think I think it was older than that and proposed to her right at the end. I was like, if this girl doesn't say yes, I will. If she doesn't say yes, I will. And then I would be crying and I'm like, I'm ready for my scene. That's cute. Thank you. All right. All right. Enough flash mob talk. Um, What are you crushing on? My crush of the week is hotels. Okay. It's just been a little bit since I've been in a hotel. And by that, I mean three weeks, actually two weeks. But I always have a good time. We were just at the hotel in Boston like a week ago. And I was like, I just like really like love like the whole nature of a hotel experience. Yeah, we were on our Zach and Cody bullshit. Um, so I've written down a little monologue of what my favorite hotel experience is, much like the airport episode where I talked about like how much I love airports. How lovely. Can I just I, I need to paint a picture for the audience of what I love about hotels so that everybody can really feel like my perspective. All right, take us there. <sighs> I love hotels by Zachariah Porter. I love a good lobby. A welcome by the concierge. Maybe a warm chocolate chip cookie if I'm staying at a double tree. I love a room on a high floor. I love a credenza at the exit of an elevator with a vase of fresh flowers. I love walking to my room and turning to my left and saying, oh, here's the ice machine. I love the first feeling of watching that silly little keypad turn green before opening the door to what will be my temporary home for a predetermined period of time. I love seeing a bed made so tight you could bounce a quarter off of it. (laughs) Which side of the bed am I staying on? What is the view out of my window? Look, a Bible in the bedside table. (laughs) I love opening my closet to find a stiff bathrobe and a large ironing board. How lucky are we to have such a generous bathroom countertop for all of my toiletries? After checking the water pressure, I love to peruse the hotel grounds. Where is the business center? Is there a pool slash sauna? 
Does the gym have a private room for my morning calisthenics? Anything is possible at my favorite hotel. By Zachary Porter. Was that sponsored by Hilton? That was incredible. I'm ready to check in. I was just thinking back on my memories of hotels and what I look for the most. And I just love the whole experience of exploring the room, checking the hotel grounds, making pleasantries with the staff, saying, oop, excuse me, while someone's pushing a cart of towels, calling the front <laughs> desk saying, can I just have a couple more towels to room 644? <laughs> a man appears, knock, 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 here's your towels. I just love it. I wish that life had that sense of care and attention every single day without having to pay for it. But that's life, sweetie, and that's showbiz. Mm, I wish we had a montage of every time we walked into a hotel room because we say the same thing every single time. This is nice. Mm. Where we go, wow. And you know I'm going to try on that robe. I just love ripping out the bed covers of a hotel. And it's so tight. And it's like, how the hell do I get into this? And then you get home and you're lucky if the sheets are clean. It's like, come on. That's a nice pleasantry, I think, mm. of hotels. I also love seeing like a hotel like, like, like hallway. Yeah. Like going to your room. It's like so far. And you're like, damn it, where's 412? And you're like, oh, here it is. Like, I just like all of the small nuisances that when you look back on a hotel, you're like, oh, that was fun. Nuances. <laughs> Nuances? Nuisances is like well, I was quite think, the opposite. Yeah, I was thinking, well, the nuisance of trying to figure out like, where's the hotel oh. room? You know what I mean? Oh, you're admiring those. Yeah, I oh, think I it's like, like in the moment, you're like, oh, we're all the way at the end of the hallway. But like when you look back and you're like, we were all the way at the end of the hallway. Yeah, it was a great, it was a journey to get there. Yeah, it's like, oh, look at this random wall art. This was fun. Good choice. One of the best hotels I ever stayed at was a double tree hotel. And I don't remember where it was, but the whole lobby was like open and they had like palm trees and everything. And there was a glass elevator and we had my dog. It was like a dog friendly hotel, absolutely clean. And it was when I was so, I was really young. And, um, and yeah, they have the cookies in the drawer, the warming drawer at any hour of the day. Now they have nuts in them, which I'm like, I feel like that's a little risky to, to be like, here's nuts for all the kids who are coming up and could be could be allergic. Yeah, we got the cookies this from when we were in Orlando and they didn't even ask if we had an allergy. We don't, but I don't prefer a nut in my cookie. Yeah. That's one thing I will say. I never want a nut in my cookie. No. Don't nut in my cookie. Do not nut in my cookie. Cho you can chocolate in my cookie. You can even fruit in my cookie. But when you put a nut in there, when people get crazy with it and they put pecans in a cookie, no. who the fuck wants a pecan in a cookie ever? Not this girl. Not this girl. Keep that to the pie world only. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a nice touch. I love, I love how every hotel is different. Mm. Some are dirtier than others, but that's life, right? Yeah. I like how the party starts in the lobby. You look around, you're getting a vibe check. Oh, is there a concierge? Nope, just a vending machine and a pile of brochures at the local attractions. That's okay for me. I love a stand of local brochures. That's one thing about me. You like a continental breakfast? Mm. Mm, no. If there's a waffle maker, yeah. things can change fast. Hotels need to realize that. A continental breakfast, boring, lazy, sloppy. But if you add the one simple waffle maker, it elevates everything. You don't, I don't need an egg. I need a waffle maker. We used a waffle maker at a hotel once, and they were sour. That was a bad batch of batter. That was weird. A classic bad batch of batter at that hotel. What is your go-to grab-and-go at a continental breakfast, if that's what's happening? Um, Probably a pastry of some sort. I love a Danish. You oh, I could do. fuck up a Danish. I love when the hotel has those really tiny boxes of name-brand cereals. Mm -hmm. How fun is that? Yeah. What a treat. And they glue the bag down at the bottom of it. So you can literally rip it open and go like this and like dump it all out and the bag won't fall out. You can pour the milk right into the box if you wanted to. Could you? It's grab and go. It's a plastic bag. It's glued <sighs> to the bottom. Wow. I'm talking Rice Krispie Treats. I'm talking Fruit Loops. I'm even talking Chex. Mm. I'm staying playful. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love that. I'm always going with this. Uh, I love to grab a piece of fruit and then ask myself later, why the fuck did I grab a banana? You're not going to eat it. I'm not eating that banana. Um, but I do love, I honestly, now that I'm thinking about it, I don't mind a continental breakfast. I prefer a buffet of eggs. Yeah, I would prefer a buffet with the cloche. And it's always a surprise when you're opening it. It's like, what's going to be in here? It's like, oh, another meat byproduct. <laughs> And I'm like, yes, put the sausage on my plate. Um, yeah, I just, I wish I could stay in a hotel every single day of my life. I wish I was Zach and you were Cody. Mm. But then we'd be brothers and that wouldn't work out. No. Lovers by chance. No. no. What is it? <laughs> brothers. Oh, what is it? You say it. Brothers by chance, lovers by choice. He says that sometimes and it's really off-putting and scary. But now I'm using it as my bit. 
<laughs> I love hotels. I'm sorry. What song's been stuck in your head all week? Welcome to Camp Songs. Welcome back to Song of the Week. That was bad and it was pitchy. I'm trying to get better, better at my long-term vocals. So can I really project? Sometimes I feel like I'm more of a head singer. Only in the shower am I really giving in my lower register. And that's on me. I'm looking for a vocal coach in the Camp Shady Birch area. If you know anybody other than Patsy Sue... Sandwich's ex-wife. We can't go to her. It's just a respect level. Um, I am looking for voice lessons. Jonathan, what is your camp song of the week, babe? So my camp song is coming all the way back from 2008. And yes, another Katy Perry song. It is Fingerprints by Katy Perry. Ooh. I feel like so many people missed this song because it just like wasn't. Yep. It didn't get any radio play, and I feel like it really should have. So I'm a huge Katy Perry fan. Well, I used to be an even bigger Katy Perry fan. Now I'm just like, I like her. I enjoy her music. I can respect her. But I was, when I Kissed a Girl came out, 2008, that was my era. I listened to every single song on one of the boys. There was not a single skip. And to this day, like, I can listen to it, and it just, like, transports me to that place. And this song, I feel like, is so important. And it's not just, like, a really fun bop. But the lyrics, I feel like, are one of the best lyrics that she had written not just for the time but like even for the rest of her discography i feel like it's up there so let me just let me just read you some lyrics because i'm assuming you guys haven't listened to it um and i feel like that's a fair assumption because not many people have i had never heard about it until you showed me and i love this song yeah so you can back me up in saying that everybody should go listen to it after this 100 100 so in the chorus she says it's my life and i'm not sitting on the sidelines watching it pass me by i'm leaving you my legacy i gotta make my mark i gotta run it hard i want you to remember me i'm leaving my fingerprints I'm leaving my fingerprints on you. Y'all, the whole, I absolutely love this. It's not a love song. It's about like, hey, I'm gonna do me and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run it till the wheels fall off and I'm gonna do my best and I'm gonna leave my legacy. I'm gonna leave my fingerprints. Yeah, it's like a big, it's a good song for like pursuing what you want in life for a job interview, for a workout, yes. for like a goal. It's The goal isn't for anything but other than um, self-improvement. It's a self-improvement anthem. And Absolutely. it's like, it's like pop. Pop rock. So, so hey, listen to this before you do a job interview or before you're going to go on a first date and just, you know, get in the mode to do you. What I did learn was this song was written back in 2005 and it was supposed to be her single instead of I Kissed a Girl. It was the title of the album. It was called Fingerprints by Katy Perry and it was being produced by Columbia Records. Yeah. And that's, I knew you would gag over that because had that been it, I feel like that song's trajectory would have, I mean, I get I Kissed a Girl is catchy and it's got the it controversy. Was, it, was it was what had to happen. It was a though. good, it was a good choice. But can you imagine if that her album would have been called Fingerprints? It's the last song on the album and nobody's listening by then. But isn't that a treat though to have it for yourself? That is true. Here's the thing. So she's writing the song about leaving her legacy and it being fingerprints. And this is like really what she's leaning into. This is her debut album, her first album in 2005. And then come 2006, it's still not released and she's wrapping everything up. She gets dropped, <gasps> completely dropped by Columbia. Big mistake. Huge. Mm -hmm. the, they were like, bye. And she was like, wow, I was literally going to make my mark. I was going to run it hard and I want you to remember me. So she moved on to uh, probably Capital, RCA. I don't know. Atlantic, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. We're just name dropping at this point. But hey, it's a great song, you guys. Fingerprints by Katy Perry. The song that never was, but actually is. I know. It's so it good. It is so good. I love that song. I, we, we put that on on the way to for my interview with um, J-Well and Vinny. Yeah. It's like a hype up song. Mm -hmm. And it's like so classic Katy. I know. And it really, I think also for me, it's a big nostalgic piece where I, I just remember myself going through oh. it in high school. Oh. It, well, yeah, but I mean, like, it was the song to, like, lean on when I was like, hey, I'm gay and, like, what's going on in my life? I don't know, but I just, like, I know I'm on this earth for a reason and it's I'd probably to make people laugh. But how do I make people laugh when they don't even want to hear how I sound when I talk? That is really sad. But here I am on a podcast talking about it. Wow, you've turned that frown upside down. Yeah, so Fingerprints by Katy Perry. Everybody go stream it, please. Thank you. I love it. So what's your camp song? 
Oh, uh, my camp song is so. No, my camp song <laughs> is a cover of a very popular song, and I believe this cover is better than the original. Snaps. The song is Walking in Memphis, the share cover from 1995. You may remember Mark Cohn's um, um, original version of it in I 1991. Remember it. Put on my blue suede shoes and I boarded the plane. Touchdown in the land of the Delta Blues. In the middle of the pouring rain. Wait, first of all, I just heard vocals on this podcast. Yeah, there was no head voice in there. Somebody, somebody, somebody that called RCA Baby. I'm the new Mark Cohn. So he put that song out in 1991. It only peaked at number 13 on the Billboard Hot 100. And it was a great original, okay? I want to start off by saying I love the original. I think it has grit. I think it has some depth. I think it's very cinematic. 1995 rolls around and Cher is putting out her 22nd album. Can you believe it? Her 22nd album out of the 26 she's actually had, and it's called A Man's World. And this is on it. And I had never heard of this cover until I met you. You also showed me this song. And it like just like blew my mind away because I had known the original for so long. But when Cher sings it, you guys, she really drags it up. She brings in the synths. She brings in the choir a hell of a lot earlier. And it just feels a little bit more sassy exciting yeah. i don't know why i love it and the video is actually really funny if you're lucky enough to find it on youtube um there's two versions of it one looks like it's been recorded on um a frog's eyeball and the <laughs> other, and the other one is okay if you squint so if you watch the squint version the entire thing is in black and white which is also a nod to the original version of it and it's just her walking around in memphis but oh no it's not just Cher walking around in memphis it's Cher and boy drag walking around as elvis in memphis Mm -hmm. So that's fun. And then also, campers, I want you to know that in my music my music video studying, I noticed that every shot of her as a woman, she is sitting on the steps of a tour bus. And she doesn't move positions. She's sitting in the exact same spot the entire time. And somehow, this woman serves a different angle in every single shot. Her hands are up. Her hands are to her face. She's to the side. Kicks her foot out. I'm like, how did she give this much variety in one tiny little space? You know why? It's Cher, bitch. She <laughs> did that. It's such a fun song. And I just like literally like, what, what's that part that I love so much? She's like, tell me, are you a Christian child? And I said, man, I am tonight. Boom, boom, boom. Walking in, walking in Memphis. Oh, yeah. It's so good. But you know what's weird? <laughs> what? In the original version, he says, Muriel plays piano every Friday at the Hollywood. And when she sings it, she goes, Gabriel plays piano. So he says Muriel. Muriel? She, Muriel. Okay. She says Gabriel. Why is that? Why is that choice? Hmm. I don't know. I think this is a song that gets me fucking silly. Um, I love it so much. I just love Cher. And it's really funny because this album like really flopped for her. It got really bad reviews. And this song only charted in the UK because if I learned anything about the study of this is that no matter what Cher does, the UK is going to, they're going to support mm -hmm, the UK. Back. Their ride or die for Cher. Yeah. More than America. What are her fandoms called? The, the Cher? The Cher um, The Cherholics. The Cherholics. Yeah. I'm not really sure, but I think Cher is cool because whatever is popular in pop culture at the moment, she's doing. She's like, oh, it's rock oh it's folk oh it's this new synth pop like she's just gonna do what she does in the new version of life and that's kind of what she was doing now it's like she was like i'm transitioning again because no one's had a career like Cher. it's true when she introduced autotune she did that was crazy i said what is this and can you turn it up louder can you put it up bass boost it baby um so our songs of the week are Walking in Memphis, Share 1995 cover, The Year I Was Born, and Fingerprints, Katy Perry, 2008. And you can listen to them on YouTube for free and the Spotify playlist that's linked in the episode description that Jonathan updates every single week. Camp songs. Scary stories around the campfire. Welcome back to ye old scary stories around the campfire. Grab your popcorn at your gums, grab a cup of bug juice, and strap in for a real scary episode, campers. Did that sound like the intro to a ride in Disney World? It definitely did. I'm warming up for next week, guys. Yeah, it was giving Gremlin Goblin Toad. I was trying to give a little London tailor who works in a little shoe store. Cobbler. He never wed. Mm -hmm. He never had kids. Yeah. And he had really bad teeth. But he was loved by the townspeople. If you, London, 
Sorry. Anyways, what do we? Is it scary this week? Is it like embarrassing? What it's, can I vibe up for? It's scary, but it's got it's got a good ending. It's uh, got a good ending. I don't know anything, guys. I'm <clears throat> on the road with you this week. I'm flying. I'm flying blind. What did I say? By the seat of your pants. <gasps> My zipper is zipped. Please. <laughs> okay. All right. So this camper writes in, and you can write into at campcounselorspodcast.com. Just click the little write in tab, and you can write on in. Just wanted to start with, I love the pod. It's my absolute comfort. I get so excited by each episode that comes out. Love you guys. Oh, so cute. Thank, Thank you, you, Camper. We, we love, love you. you. I have a scary story that's creepy, ooky, spooky, and kind of camp. So for context, I'm a film graduate girly like Jonathan. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> and this story takes place my final year of studying film at uni. Yes, I'm British. I do live in a flat, not an apartment. <gasps> Yeah. My soul was doing my intro because I knew I had to represent this woman. That is, wait, you literally were doing a little London man. She was coming through me, mate. Okay. On the first lecture of the fourth year, our lecturer was briefing us about our graduate film project. This is a big end of the degree film. About 50% of your grade is based on it. So it's a really big deal. We were getting all the details and deadlines, etc. But one thing he wanted to warn us about was a person who had caused a lot of trouble and fear in former students. He said we needed to keep an eye out for a guy named Peter. Peter? Yeah, it says, fuck it, real name. He's a creep. I'm going to bleep out his last name, though. Um, when, I'm sorry, he was for a guy named Peter who was known for stalking women on short film shoots. How specific. I know. He said this guy had turned up to be an extra on a shoot of a graduate film a few years ago and had stalked the director. Anyway, he said he was particularly interested in horror slash thriller flicks. Okay, didn't know stalkers all of a sudden have niches, like you're a picky stalker. <laughs> so I just see, keep an eye out. I can see it. I can see yeah. how that would like lend itself to that genre. Where he wants to like plant himself in a scene where something like horrifying might be happening. Because he's a horrifying person. Repo. Okay, foreshadowing. Anywho, guess who the only female director of a horror film was that year? <laughs> <laughs> me. It was me. So I'm staying vigilant. We put out casting calls for characters. I know his full name, so I'm looking out, but I don't see anything. So far, so good. Or so I thought. My producer flags to me that there's an email from a Peter, insert blank name here, on our film's account. And I'm like, oh my God, here we go. But nothing we can't handle. He emails saying he wants to know if we're looking for extras in our film. I reply saying we weren't shooting any of the scenes with extras needed, but thanks for your interest, which was a complete lie, but I had to do what I had to do. He emails me back saying, I want to be cast in the film considering I donated 300 pounds to your fundraiser. Okay, so this is where it gets a little a little power dynamic-y. Okay, so she checks the fundraiser and the donation for 300 pounds had been made 10 minutes prior from a user called Film Guy. Wow, creative. I start panicking, but think, no, it's fine. I don't owe him shit. Amen. No, the fuck you don't. No, you. Don't. this creepy man is not going to pay $300 to reign terror and be a fucking weirdo on this film set. That's Absolutely. fucking weird. And how awful to be like, I'm supporting this project. I should be in it. Like, first off, you have Napoleon syndrome. Second off, you're a fucking weirdo. Anyway, he donated the money, but there was no promise of any involvement in the donation, so I didn't have to do anything, which is so true. You're donating money for this to get... I'm getting riled up because that's fucking annoying and fucked up. Sorry, I need to stop swearing. I replied quite stern, but thanked him for the money. Wrong approach. I spent the next 48 hours in absolute nightmare as this weirdo starts making YouTube videos about me and the film I'm making. He calls my crew, quote, fucking belligerent idiots and an entitled little brat. But the cherry on top was he said, and the director, um, I'm going to change her name, Sally. And the director, Sally, is a stupid little slut with too big an ego. That's terrifying. Okay. It's kind of camp being called a little... Deli <laughs> It's kind of camp being called a little director slut with too big an ego. Going to put it on my resume. Anyway, <laughs> he ended up emailing my boss at work one time saying he should be careful about trusting his employee and Sally is dishonest. Then he emailed me telling me he knew where I live. <gasps> did that, he really though? Apparently he did. That was his mistake. He had made a threat to come outside my flat. So I filed a police report. To wrap this up, me, along three other victims of his harassment, threats, and stalking, managed to get the motherfucker 
put in prison and he won't be doing anything to any female directors anytime soon. Signed, Serving Justice, Slutty Little Director in Cabin 3. Oh my God. That's nothing. It was like a string of like just creepy behavior towards female horror directors. Like what a niche like group for real though. I know. That's so, yeah, something is wrong with that guy. And hey, I'm proud of our camper though. She got him locked yes, up and did. put away, girl. Mm-hmm. And good for you for being like, yeah, you donated $300, but I do not need to do anything for you. I do not owe you shit. You donated for this production. I want to watch the movie. Let us know where we can watch the movie. Oh, wait, yeah. Can you send it to us? Camper, send it to us. Um, you could probably email it to us, campcounselorspod at gmail.com. If the file's too big, I, I don't know what to tell you. But we would love to sneak a peek at that. That would be really cool. So thank you so much for listening, you guys. If you want to submit anything for Dear Counselors, Confession Canoe, what else do we have? Scary stories around the campfire. What am I missing? Gossip Doc. You can go to campcounselorspodcast.com and you can send it in there. And I think that's all we got for you. It's true. And with that being said, lights, lights out, out campers. campers.